In this series of videos, we'll look at the development of the American government, uh, the period from uh, the American Revolution through the uh, Constitution. In this first video, we'll look at the development of the first form of American government, the Articles of Confederation. As the Second Continental Congress met during the Revolutionary War, the members realized that they didn't have the democratic legitimacy to be a permanent government. And as a result, the Second Continental Congress not only acted as the national government during the war, corresponding with the troops and trying to fund it and so forth, but it also began to debate a new permanent legitimate form of government for the new nation they anticipated. Early on, John Dickinson, a member of Congress in Pennsylvania who had not earlier been a strong advocate of independence, nevertheless proposed a government with a very powerful Congress. Like many members of the Continental Congress, he saw Congress as a harmonious body, probably because they'd been relatively uh, you know, harmonious and, uh, and united against Great Britain during the war. In Dickinson's plan, there'd be no executive, no president, but Congress could fight wars, raise an army, run the Postal Service, regulate trade, and it could borrow money and settle disputes between states. These last two provisions upset a number of states because they saw sovereignty, real control, lying with the state governments, not any national government that might be formed. According to Dickinson's plan, the federal Congress appeared above the states. And so, for the next year and a half, they debated with no action. When the French alliance began to materialize after the Battle of Saratoga and the American Revolution in 1777, the Continental Congress saw more urgency in creating a legitimate permanent government for the nation uh, that they were trying to create. They believed that France would be more likely to deal with a permanent legitimate body. And so a number of amendments were proposed to Dickinson's plans, which considerably weakened Congress. It really wasn't until late 1777 that the Continental Congress sent their new government, which they called the Articles Confederation, to the states for ratification. The Articles required the unanimous ratification by all the states, which held up uh, official ratification until 1781, over, over three years later. This delay sort of was a preview of some of the problems the Articles of Confederation would have once it's developed. The Continental Congress continued to meet uh, until the Articles of Confederation were ratified, and in the fall of 1781, the first uh, Articles of Confederation Congress met. As this drama unfolded in Philadelphia, the states went about drafting their own state constitutions. And every state uh, decided to draft a written state constitution. And uh, the idea of a written constitution was relatively new. The British referred to their constitution as a set of traditions and values, and it really wasn't written down. And the Americans thought that, well, hell, you know, the fact that the, the unwritten nature of the British constitution it, it made it easier for uh, that British government to abuse them. And so, uh, you know, each state had a special election to send delegates to its state constitutional convention. And when they drafted their constitutional, uh, their, their state constitutions, you know, every state wrote of government as the cons as the consent of the governed. You know, it's uh, it's something that the, the the people came first, and they're not under the government. The constitutions, after being drafted, were then. Uh, had to be approved by the qualified voters of the states in almost uh, all, all of the colonies. Nearly all the uh, state constitutions provided for state governments with three branches, executive, legislative, and judicial. Most kept uh, bicameral legislatures, two houses in their state legislature, but Pennsylvania and Georgia got rid of the upper house. It said there's no need for a check on the people with any appointed body or other elected body. The, the governor in these constitutions was uh, very weak. He uh, generally could not convene or dismiss the legislatures. He had no veto power over the legislatures. He, he couldn't make land grants or give jobs away as patronage. Most states had a, a very short term for the governor's uh, office, you know, some only one year. And most had some limited eligibility for re-election. Pennsylvania and Georgia simply got rid of the governor's position completely. The weak executive, or, pres or, or governor, was obviously a reaction to the royal 
governors in the in the colonies and the, how they'd been abusing their their rights according to the the colonies. Six state constitutions had a bill of rights. Virginia was the first to do so, and and other states sort of borrowed from it. It closely resembled the Declaration of Independence in its rhetoric and explicitly protected the right uh, to bear arms, freedom of speech and religion, and rules against uh, ex post facto laws, laws passed that made something illegal after the action was taking place. Overall, states could tax, and regulate, and coin money, and clearly these state constitutions saw the states as the true sovereign body, not any federal government that might emerge later. Not surprisingly, the Articles of Confederation government that, ended, that they ended up with provided for a very weak central government. Again, it's an obvious reaction to the British power they had faced. It created a unicameral, one-house legislature elected every year. Each state could have between two and seven delegates, but regardless, each had only one vote. So in voting-wise, uh, all the states were equal. There was no executive, no president, or, and, and no judicial department, no, no uh, national courts. It created a, a small series of committees to run the daily uh, functions of the government when Congress was not in session. Congress itself was weak. There were routine decisions required a majority of seven states, but more important decisions required a supermajority of nine states. And to amend the articles themselves, it required... The, uh, the amendment to be unanimous. You know, one state could therefore hold up the, the rest hostage in a sense. Congress couldn't tax or regulate Congress. The idea was that each state would contribute money to the federal government according to the relative value of its land. You know, the, uh, sort of the states themselves were the ones that could tax. And, uh, of course, there was no provision that the states would actually provide money to the federal government. And so this, you know, this provision, all this sort of meant that the federal government had no revenue except for asking the states. They, uh, they couldn't do a tariff or provide taxes at all. And, of course, as you might expect, requests for funds were almost uniformly turned down by the state governments. The only real power uh, the con Articles of Confederation Congress had was to regulate weights and measures, supervise Indian affairs, establish a postal service, and uh, you know sort of conduct foreign affairs. But it couldn't even raise an army. It, even in this regard, it had to ask the states. So you know, an incredibly weak central government. The Problems with the Articles of Confederation government were kind of obvious from the get-go, from the start. Some states were slow to elect delegates to the National Congress. And with elections held every year and with poor transportation, it, you know, was, it meant pretty much, it, it, you know, it, it, was, it was pretty much constant campaigning. There was no time for the congressmen to do any real work. When they did meet, many delegates proved long-winded, slowing business to a halt. To address this problem, the delegates decided to reorganize themselves soon after meeting the first time, and they formed a series of executive committees, Congress uh, members appointed to carry out more routine functions of the government. Most famous of these was a committee on finance led by Robert Morris, a, a wealthy Philadelphia merchant shown here. Morris first proposed a federal tax on imports. Uh, that's a tariff, but as this wasn't in the articles, it required an amendment, uh, and the amendment had to be unanimous, so it, it never happened. Morris then proposed a national bank. The bank that Morris proposed uh, was going to be privately owned, but it would hold all the federal government's hard assets, its species, gold and silver. Uh, the idea was that it could issue banknotes based upon these assets. Well, the Articles of Confederation of Congress approved Morris's bank, and it was called the Bank of North America. And you can see the building it was housed in here. The uh, Bank of North America that Morris uh, got created, you know, 
it had problems from the get-go. It, it, it never had enough hard assets in its vaults to support its banknotes it created and sold. Here's a picture of a Bank of North America banknote. The bank would issue these notes, and whoever had the note could go to the Bank of North America and get that amount of gold and silver. Uh, but, you know, there wasn't enough gold and silver to support it. These, uh, the Bank of North America did help stem inflation a little bit, but when its charter expired in 1786, it was not renewed, and, and thus the Bank of North America folded. Morris, nevertheless, by this time, had, uh, had left Congress, and he'd invested personally in the bank, and so he'd actually left Congress uh, more wealthy than he entered it. I should note that the Articles of Confederation might have needed a, a central location to deposit their assets and a successful bank in North America because they needed to pay off the war debt they'd, they'd inquired uh, during the uh, American Revolution, and, and the states were not really contributing money for, for them to pay it off. I'll, I'll talk more about the problems of paying off the Revolutionary War debt in a, a later video. In any event, this concludes the uh, the first video on the establishment of the first government of the United States, the Articles Confederation.